Hi, hello, hi. So, today, I wanted to talk about OCD. And the reason why I want to talk about OCD is for a couple of reasons. Firstly, with Halloween coming up, I feel like there are some things that made me want to talk about this. I'll get into that. Secondly, I've been watching season two of Atypical, and I noticed that the writers don't really differentiate between the main characters' OCD traits and autistic traits. And although I know a lot of autistic people do have OCD, not all people with OCD have autism vice versa, so I just, I think it would be interesting to talk about. Also, it's the last of my disabilities that I've never really made a full video on. It's something that I don't talk about as much as my others because this is the oldest diagnosis that I have, so let's just get right into it. When I was very young, my mom realized that I probably had OCD. My mom realized that I did a lot of things that most of the other kids weren't doing to a pretty severe extent. I feel like in adulthood, there's some things we do because they're learned behaviors, but I feel like when a kid is doing something like <laughs> really obvious and it's like, it's clear that they haven't learned this anywhere, they're just doing it instinctually, I feel like that's kind of a red flag, so I feel like that's why OCD was the thing that I was diagnosed with when I was young because it was clear that there was something up with me but that seemed I guess to be the most obvious one for a kid to be engaging in that seemed like out of the ordinary. So when I was a kid I had a lot of rituals and I wasn't a loud kid and I wouldn't really throw tantrums. I would have meltdowns but they're completely different from tantrums and not everyone who has meltdowns screams so I mean I'll get into that another time but I had rituals and when the rituals couldn't be fulfilled I would really just stop functioning. Uh, I had insomnia from a very young age, like the earliest I could remember having insomnia is when I was like six. And it's not normal, I guess. Uh, I, I guess it's atypical. <laughs> For a child to deal with insomnia, because at the age of six, when my home life is relatively stable, it's not like anxiety is what's keeping me up. It was clear that there was something else there. Uh, so I can't remember all of my rituals, but I remember the one that was the most obvious because the insomnia was the most obvious, was my before bed ritual. When I was a kid, I used to share a room with my brother. He's two years older than me. And before we would go to bed every night, we would have to say, I would say goodnight, he would say goodnight. I would say sweet dreams, he would say sweet dreams. I would say I love you, he would say I love you. That was the ritual. That, turn off the light, go to bed. And if anyone says anything between that time, then we need to start it over. Like we absolutely have to. And if we didn't, I wouldn't sleep. And like I said, I learned to be very quiet and very kind of introverted as a kid. I mean, I don't know if I learned that, but it's just, it's the way that I was. Both of my parents ran businesses out of the house. So I learned to be, I, I suppose, presentable? I don't know. I just, so I would suffer, but I guess I wouldn't really like keep others awake. Sometimes I'd keep my brother awake. He would have to say goodnight, sweet dreams, I love you, even if we were fighting. He was a good sport. So that was my first bedtime ritual. And like I said, when it wouldn't be fulfilled, I wouldn't sleep and I would have trouble functioning the next day. And I had trouble explaining to my parents why that was. And of course my mom tried to find other rituals to replace it. And I will get into that. They were effective, but then not entirely effective. I would just have this impending feeling of doom. I would feel like, I don't know, I was a very fearful kid. And I realize now that my fearfulness was actually just intrusive thoughts. I had intrusive thoughts about people coming into the house and hurting my family. I had intrusive thoughts about like ghosts and stuff. I don't know. Things that six-year-olds are afraid of, okay? I had a lot of intrusive thoughts and that made me come off kind of as a scaredy cat, but it's like I didn't really get to control the thoughts, and it's not to say that there were voices in my head, there weren't. It was just this overwhelming fear and feeling that something terrible is going to happen. And it didn't always have to do with something like that intense. Sometimes it would just be like, if I have a math test the next day, for example, if I don't do my bedtime ritual, then I feel like I'm going to fail my math test. And it doesn't always have to be the bedtime ritual. It could be a morning ritual. It could be the amount of times walking in the schoolyard that I would step on a crack in the asphalt with my left foot. And it's like, if I didn't step on it the right amount of time, I would not be able to shake the feeling that I was going to fail my tests, stuff like that. And intrusive thoughts are something that everyone deals with. I'm just going to inform you if you are watching this and you're like, oh my god, I must have OCD. Hang on a sec. Everyone deals with intrusive thoughts. The reason why we have them is because our brain is trying to learn, I suppose, or prepare itself. It's normal to be standing at the top of a high place and just think, I could throw my phone off of here. I could throw my friend's phone off of here. Doesn't mean you will, and it doesn't mean you want to, it's just those thoughts occur to you. I used to be really freaked out because I would picture my parents' funeral and I would I would cry and I would, I don't know, almost experience it in my brain. And like, I understand, my dad, my dad had meningitis when I was very small and almost died. And so I guess my brain's way of preparing for that was to kind of experience a scenario in my brain and go through it so that when it does happen, it's prepared. Anyway, 
that's just a brief little talk on why we all have intrusive thoughts and that they're completely normal, don't worry. They become characteristic of OCD when they become debilitating, meaning that they interfere with your everyday ability to function, and usually when they are coupled with compulsions. So the obsessive is the intrusive thoughts, the compulsions are what goes with the intrusive thoughts. So the compulsions could be rituals like mine, the compulsions could be physical tics or verbal tics, etc. I'll get into all that. So to replace my nighttime ritual, the alternative presented to me was prayer. So it wasn't to like push God on me or anything like that. I was just, I grew up Catholic, Italian, so I went to, you know, mass to do my communion and stuff like that. Anyway, so I was told that when I'm scared to talk to God and to pray, and so I developed a prayer ritual, which just became even longer and more complicated to follow. First of all, I didn't know any of the prayers except for the Our Father, because nobody specified that I had to do certain prayers. I was just told to pray. I would just talk to God, like, hey, what's up, God? It's me, ya boy. And then go on to just list off in my brain all the things that I don't want to happen to my family. One by one, everything, to the point where when I realized that, like, kidnapping and, like, abduction were different things, I had to incorporate both of those into my prayer to make sure that neither of them happened. And it just, it became, um, it became a lot. With all that being said, that's when we realized that I have OCD, and I've been dealing with it ever since. My OCD has manifested itself in many ways. It has manifested itself through my eating disorder, for example, and of course, trigger warning, eating disorders. My eating disorder, both when I ate and after I ate, if you catch the drift, became ritualistic in that I absolutely had to do them, and if I didn't, my brain would start to threaten me with the intrusive thoughts. And at least this time, the intrusive thoughts were a little more coherent in that they made made sense with the compulsion, so I would engage in my eating disorder rituals in order to avoid gaining weight, because that was the threat my brain was making. It was like, you absolutely need to do this thing, otherwise you're gonna gain weight, and that was that, that was the cycle. So although it did present itself as an eating disorder, it very much was just a different presentation of my OCD. Now, not all OCD makes sense, and what I mean by that is sometimes the intrusive thoughts won't make much sense, and the resulting compulsions will make even less sense. Even when I kiss my cat, I have to kiss him a certain number of times. It's very weird to explain. Some physical things like kissing my cat, for example, or stepping on cracks, it's almost like my body could physically feel when it hasn't been the right number of times, and it's as if it just feels off. It's like you're filling a glass and it's not full yet, I guess. I don't I don't I don't really know how to explain it, but there's just a physical thing that my body does where it just it needs to be a certain number of times, otherwise it feels like I'm uneven. I don't know. Anyway, moving on. I started to have really bad OCD tics or compulsions while I was in class. The most noticeable and most annoying one that I had to deal with was a verbal tic where I would have to make the highest pitch sound that I could, followed by the lowest pitch sound, followed by the highest pitch sound, whichever number of times I had to do it in order for my body to feel equal or even. Anyway, all that being said, I ended up adopting the act of knocking on wood, and when I didn't have wood, I started knocking on my head because I was told that that was an alternative for knocking on wood. And then when I realized that that made people think that I was violent or disturbed in some way because I was hitting myself in the head over, over, and over, and over again, I started to knock on my knuckles. And I actually do this so often that I have calluses on my hands from doing it. It has been the healthiest compulsion that I've developed and it always works. It's always a safe thing for me to do if I'm driving and I think of something and I get really freaked out. I will just knock on my knuckles and that will get me calm enough and it'll kind of cancel out the intrusive thoughts and anyway, that's how I dealt with them. But I'm just bringing this up because I started thinking about this when I was thinking about Halloween. With Halloween coming around the corner, I feel like there are a lot of superstitious things that happen, especially those like chain messages where it's like, now that you've read this, you need to send it to seven friends, otherwise this person will show up in your bed and you'll have like seven years of bad luck. And then basically that that really harps on my OCD because there's the intrusive thought of like, oh no, what if this thing happens? Coupled with the compulsions of, well, if I do this thing, then this other thing definitely won't happen. So I hate chain letters. I hate superstitions. I hate learning about new superstitions. Please don't tell me about new superstitions. I don't want to hear them. Things about like, oh, if you step on a crack, you're gonna break your mother's back. I'm like, why are you speaking? No, I'm, I'm kidding. It's it's not, it's nobody's fault. I can't put other people at fault for this. I'm just saying there's a lot of, I don't know, black cats and superstition that happens around Halloween, and that's just, I hate that. I love Halloween, but I just, I don't want to hear about anyone's superstitions. And if you do, I mean, again, I'll deal with it. I'll knock on my knuckles because that is what I've learned how to do. 
do. I do this a lot and I'm worried y'all gonna notice, but it's fine. That's kind of the same reason why I'm not super into astrology, why I don't like checking my astrology charts. I know a lot of queers are just like so about astrology and I do think it's entertaining and I did my birth chart and I did a podcast on it with Chase and it was fun, but I'm not the type of person who could check my astrology advice, I guess, every day because it'll be a trigger for me to re-engage in ritualistic behavior and kind of limit what I could do and as soon as I read something that says like, I don't know, now's not a good time to do this, it's going to get stuck in my head and I'm going to feel like no matter what I do, it'll happen, but I found ways of working around it. I have healthy coping mechanisms. I also want to make this video because there's kind of this misunderstanding of what OCD is. People tend to think that OCD means that you're like super organized and all this stuff and from what I understand obsessive compulsive personality disorder is something like that and it's completely different from obsessive compulsive disorder so I don't know why they would call it that but I don't know. I don't know enough about that to really make a video right now about it. I will do more research but it's just to let you know there's a difference between I'm so organized haha lol I'm so OCD because I'm so organized and it's like that's not what OCD is. I am incredibly disorganized just like I would I wish I were more organized. I really do. I am particular. I am very particular about things I eat and where I place things and whether or not they've been moved and I could tell if something's in a different place. Yes, absolutely, but I am in no way organized. I am really a disaster from people looking from the outside in. I think a part of that has to do with ADHD, probably. I don't know. But just to let you know, OCD has nothing to do with how you like your pencils to be aligned. I see where OCD got the rap of being about being organized in that a lot of OCD compulsions manifest themselves in the form of rituals and rituals could lead to organization. Like having a morning ritual means that maybe you'll like make your bed and make breakfast and like, I don't know, be organized. But sometimes for people like me, rituals don't always make sense and they don't always come about in these really organized ways where all of my pencils need to be in a certain order. And just because you're a person who loves organization and order doesn't necessarily mean that you have OCD. The intrusive thoughts are a key component and also whether or not it is interfering with your regular activity, I guess, would also be part of whether or not your intrusive thoughts are part of OCD. I guess. Again, intrusive thoughts are normal. Don't freak out if you have them. They're our brain's way of preparing for all different types of things that can happen in life. It's when they start to get in the way of your everyday functioning, that's when they would kind of more or less be classified as OCD because they are now obsessive compulsive disorder because the disorder bit comes about when it is interfering with your everyday ability to function. Uh, that's it. I guess one last thing I want to say about Halloween regarding mental health that's not necessarily about OCD but kind of is about scaring people. Please don't scare people without their consent, without knowing that they really don't mind being scared beforehand because it could cause a whole bunch of problems. It could cause heart problems, it could cause respiratory problems, you could trigger them if they have PTSD and you jump out at them they might go back to re-experiencing their past traumas because you've startled them and that's something that could happen, just as fireworks could be triggering for someone. So please be considerate, don't be ableist this Halloween season. That's about it. Let me know if you have any questions. I hope you liked this video. I hope you have a nice, fun, spooky season. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and a great week and you take care of yourselves. All right, thanks, bye.